Today on RVA Grooves, we'll taste the local at the first ever Carytown Beer Festival. We'll then head over to chat with Eric and Patrick at Hardywood to discuss the craft beer movement and the popularity of their brand. We finish by showcasing the culinary delights featured by food trucks with the RVA Street Foods. RVA Grooves starts now. Standing outside the beautiful Carytown district for the first ever craft beer fest. It is amazing. You can see the line behind me. Some of the best beers are out here right in this little area. And it's sold out. Legends, Hardywood, just to name a few. I'm going to go in and taste beers and we're going to talk to some of the people that actually made this possible. RBA Groups starts right now. Let's go inside and taste some craft local beer. here with one of the people that actually made this possible, Mike Murphy, 311 Productions. Mike, this is crazy. Did you expect this? We, we did not expect this many people. It's very exciting. The CMA, the organization that runs the festival, is, is just so happy and so pleased. It makes sense. Craft beer, carry town, fun, beautiful weather. Why not? And how long have you guys been playing in this or, or who started the concept? Uh, it was done at a marketing meeting with the Carrytown Merchants Association. And with the popularity of craft beer and the love of Carytown, it made perfect sense. We've been planning on it for about nine months. And how many vendors and how, how many people did it take to get this all possible? I mean, was there any resistance at all? Or was everybody volunteering ready to be a part? Uh, we have a lot of volunteers today. We have over 20 craft brews from the Taste the Local program. And it takes probably 200 volunteers. What do you have next? What's next on the agenda for your company or anything that's local festival-wise? Especially going on in the late in the late summertime and in fall. In Carytown, the next thing that they have is the Watermelon Festival. That's uh, August the 11th, and uh, that's a big time, 118,000 people. Thank, thank you for taking the time. I know you got to go in there and deal with this sold-out crowd. This is Mike Murphy. He's from 311 Productions. Make sure you look them up for anything going on in Richmond that you want to be involved with. Of course, I got to take the opportunity to talk to the people that make it happen from Brown Distributing, Ben Petty. He's the craft beer guy. That's what you're calling yourself, right, Ben? Sure, why not? Ben, talk about this event and how big it's grown for its first time, first year. So this is uh, the Carytown's, you know, first annual craft beer fest. We hope it's the first of many. Uh, based on what you can see around you right now, we think it's uh, it's kind of a big success. Uh, so basically, you know, we love Virginia, we love Richmond, and we like craft beer, and we like uh, bringing craft beer to Richmond, particularly local beer. So we've got, you know, all your big local breweries here, and a bunch of small guys, a bunch of new guys. Um, just a, a chance to get out, enjoy the city, and. Uh, Enjoy the good things these uh, great brewers have to offer. All right, Ben, I know you guys got a lot of festivals going on this summer, carrying into the fall where it really gets big. Talk about some of the upcoming events. Yeah, so, uh, you know, in the summertime, we got some really fantastic festivals going on. Uh, we'll have our um, second annual RVA BQ down on the bottom in August. Um, August is Virginia Craft Beer Month, and Virginia is for craft beer lovers. So, uh, you know, check out uh, on the state's website about Virginia's for craft beer lovers. You can see tons of events going on around there. We'll have, of course, uh, Richmond's Beer Week, um, Oktoberfest at St. Benedict's, always a good time in September. Um, oh, Center of the Universe. Can we edit Center of the Universe in there? Those guys are here. They're really fantastic. Try their beers up in Ashton if you haven't been there yet. All right, Ben, last but not least, how do people get in contact with you and find out all this information about the festivals and events that you have going on? TasteTheLocal.com. It's just that simple. Ben Petty from Brown Distributing, the craft beer guy. Now I'm here with no stranger to craft beer in RVA. PJ from Legends Brewery. PJ, thank you once again for taking the time to talk to RVA Grooves. Talk about today's festival. I mean, look at this crowd. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Lots of good people enjoying beer. You know, a nice long line at my table. I'd love to see that. I don't have to pour myself this time. It's awesome. PJ, what you got out here today? Uh, we have our... Um, our guardian dog Doppelbach uh, going on right now as part of our new Urban Legend series is celebrating the, uh, the old cast iron dog in Hollywood Cemetery. 
Oh, and we have a whole series of beers coming out about various interesting stories from around the Richmond area. About the old Churchill Tunnel train collapse. We got something like that coming out pretty soon. Uh, Lost City Saison is coming out uh, in a couple weeks. That's going to be a pretty awesome beer. And we're also pouring our uh, brand new year-round beer, the uh, Hop Fest. There's uh, seven different types of hops in um, this Hop back, there's dry hop, it's in the tank, it's in everything. And it's, it's our year-round offering right now. And uh, latest number seven coming out. And that always was our anniversary beer. And we only made that once a year, but now we're making it year-round. Now that we're getting ready to celebrate 20 years. Everybody knows where you're located. But just in case they don't, because the open patio, the patio's open, great seating out there, great food. Make sure you give them the website and the location, hours of operation, before I let you go. Oh, yeah. All right, legendbrewing.com. We're all also on the Facebooks and Twitters and Pinterest and Instagrams. <laughs> now I'm standing here with Alex from Hardywood. Alex, thanks for taking the time to talk to me again. Um, Alex, look at this festival. I mean, for the first time in Carytown, did you guys expect it? Not at all. It's a, a great turnout. I don't think anyone expected it. Not even Hardywood. Um, we, we're used to all the crowds at, at, at the brewery in here in Richmond, Virginia. What did you guys bring out today? Uh, we've got our Hardywood single, which is our blonde ale. Um, and we've also got our Belgian quad, uh, a draft only release at the brewery and various locations in, in town. You guys used to be known as the new kids on the block. You're not really that anymore because you all are setting that trend and, and putting Richmond on the map right now. Talk about the brewery and what you guys got going on over there now. Well, right now we're, uh, we've got tasting room hours from Wednesday to uh, Saturday till 9 p.m. Um, if you're available, you can come do tastings at the brewery, you can come get a glass, hang out, uh, support our local food trucks as well. We do uh, food truck court every Thursday from 6 to 9 o'clock. Um, we have uh, food options from local food trucks every other night of the week as well. Um, and we do live music Friday and Saturday nights other than that. Anything new going on with you guys? Are you traveling anywhere? Are you putting your brand in any other places? Are you just trying to really stay local? We're staying local at the moment. Um, you can find single in two to three hundred uh, various locations in the Richmond area. We go as far north as Ashland and we get into Petersburg as well. Um, hopefully in the near future we can uh, serve our product to the rest of the state. Well, Alex, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Before I let you go, I need it all. Website, Facebook, Instagram, all of the ways that people can come over to Hardywood. Great. It's uh, hardywood.com is our website. Uh, you can search Hardywood Beer on Facebook. And uh, I would keep up with Facebook for most of our updates. That's the best way to uh, keep in touch. What an awesome day. We couldn't ask for anything better than this. Carytown was beautiful. I got to taste beers. I got to talk to my guys from Legends, Hardywood, and Brown Distributed, and, of course, the people that made this possible, 311 Productions. This was great. Make sure you support everything local and log on to everybody's website. I got to go listen to the band and drink some more beer. This is what we call all things arts and culture, RVA Groove. RVA Grooves. We'll be right back. Jazz, America's original art form at the fourth annual Richmond Jazz Festival at Maymont, presented by Altria August 8th through the 11th. You don't want to miss Jill Scott, Michael McDonald, The Whalers, Joe Sample, Kirk Whalem, and others. The Richmond Jazz Festival presented by Altria, brought to you in part by Virginia's for Lovers, Dominion, Midwest Vaco, Richmond Region Tourism, Richmond BMW, and NBC12. Visit jazz at Maymont.com today.
Today I'm inside Hardywood Park and I'm going to talk to the owners about their unique craft beer experience. I'm also going to talk to the head brewer about how they make this beer happen. Hardywood, I cannot wait to drink it today. Let's go check them out. Now standing inside Hardywood with the owners, Eric and Patrick. First of all, thank you guys for taking the time to talk to RVA Grooves. You guys are such a movement in Richmond. So tell me, how did you guys get started in this business? So Patrick and I were kids together. We grew up uh, up in the Northeast and uh, always wanted to start a business. And it all sort of came together when in 2001, both of us ended up in Australia at a place called Hardywood Park. It was the name of a sheep farm where I did my orientation for study abroad, and uh, Patrick was over there with a friend of his and invited them to come out, and both of us sort of had our first home-brewed beer at this place and uh, inspired us to want to start brewing our own beer. I think we didn't realize you could make beer on such a small scale in your house and um, have it have so much flavor. So we both started home brewing, which eventually led into to jobs in the beer industry, and about 10 years later, we finally uh, made uh, the, the dream come true with getting Hardywood off the ground. Yeah, well, Richmond, you, both of you guys, like you just said, you're not from Richmond. No. So why did you choose this big city to come to to make beer? Yeah, we get that question a lot, but uh, either Eric or I are from Richmond, we're both from the Northeast, and uh, we came here for a number of reasons. We started, we looked around pretty much all over the place, we looked wherever we could. We were both working in New York City at one point, and uh, we started focusing on Southeast just because of the, the growth in craft beer and there really weren't that many craft breweries around the Southeast. We looked in North Carolina quite a bit and uh, eventually Eric actually ended up moving down here for work about a year before we started and uh, just kept telling me what a great beer town it was. And I came down to visit a few times and just sort of noticed all the enthusiasm for craft beer and what a, what a great energy the city had. And, eventually agreed this would be the place to do it. And came down and found a building and did it. And, and they've done it very well, guys. I want to say that craft, the word craft, you know, a lot of people don't understand what it means, you know, when it's when it's talked about being local. Sure. Can one of you guys expand on what craft sure. beer means? Yeah, so early on, the craft beer movement, I think it's largely called the microbrewery movement, which referred to the size of the brewery. Um, today, it's mostly referred to as craft beer, which refers more to the, to the way we approach brewing. Um, the Brewers Association defines craft beer as beer made by uh, a company that is privately owned. Um, it's, uh, I guess, independently owned. A high percentage of the ingredients, 75% of the ingredients, must be um, non-adjunct. So basically, you can't use corn and rice um, in your beer. And, uh, it has to be small, so small, independent, and uh, uh, traditional in terms of your ingredients. The Hardywood experience is a very unique experience when you're taking over a little part of the, the, the boulevard area, as they call it, behind the diamond. So when a customer walks in, what's their experience like? If you could, if you could say what their experience is like. Yeah, I would, uh, I would say their experience is really an introduction to what we're doing here. And we really want to take that opportunity to educate them on not only what we brew, but beer in general, how craft beer is made. And uh, it's it's that education that you don't always get out in the marketplace, in the restaurants, in the stores. So we're hoping we can have that dialogue with our customers in a, in a sort of pleasant, fun way by having things like the, uh, the food trucks or different bands come out and uh, it just encourages people that might not normally visit a craft brewery to come out and learn a little bit about beer, how it's made and how what we're all about. Yeah, and your tasting room is very, you know, it's kind of upscale. Everything in here is a little yeah. bit more upscale than what you would expect <laughs> a normal brewery to look Fair like. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but everything looks modern and trendy and unique. So yeah. when people come in, they can, they can taste everything or only kind of what you're brewing for the day. They can, they can taste anything we have available. We don't always have our whole gamut of beers available. We have only one year-round beer. Everything else is either part of a reserve series, part of a barrel series, or part of our pilot series. And they're all limited to once a year brews. So whatever we have currently brewing, you'll be able to taste. RBA Brews is all about art and culture and experience and the things that are in Richmond. One of the things that people know about now is Thursday nights at Party. 
Can you tell us a little bit about how you guys got involved with the RK Street Foodies? Sure, yeah. So one thing we didn't really expect when we opened was the level to which we could become a sort of community hub and a, a place where, where uh, cultural activity takes place. And one thing, I guess, that really characterized the events we had here is that Thursday night food truck court. Um, RVA Street Foodies approached us about a little uh, under a year ago and approached us about doing a Thursday night food truck court here at the brewery and felt that the one component that was missing from where they had done it prior was having beer. Yeah. And, uh, certainly uh, doing it right at a brewery makes it really fun where you can actually see, meet the people who are behind the beer and, and you know meet the people who are behind making your food and have it all in one place and in a very casual atmosphere that's very family friendly. Yeah and I've experienced it and it is a good time, good beer and good food. So everybody has to come out and experience you guys on Thursday nights. Thank you very much. Now I'm standing with Brian Head Brewer here at Hardingwood Park. We have beers in front of us. I can see a process behind me. Talk to me about all of this. How, well, does, how does this happen? Well, we do, uh, we take pride in what we do here at Hardywood and basically taking ingredients, raw materials, whether it be uh, malted barley, hops, yeast, water, and we do a couple other things that we add to our beers, uh, specifically our Reserve Series beers, spices, uh, different types of fruits or uh, vegetables even, uh, pumpkins we've added to our beers. But we start with the malt and the water. Uh, typically, you know, in the background, there's a lot of expensive equipment back there, but we take uh, hot water and mix it with the malt, and that actually gets a, has, the malt has some enzymes in it that actually convert the starches in those malts and over the sugars, and that's essentially what you want out of that process in order for the yeast to act on and produce alcohol, which is everybody's favorite, one of the, <laughs> everybody's favorite part of beer. Um, we do need to get, you know, and we take it from there, we go to the kettle, which is actually where we add the hops, uh, some of the spices, and some of our uh, other things we do, our pumpkins we add in there when we do our pumpkin beer. Um, and that actually boils it together, mixes it all, integrates it, uh, does a couple other things scientifically that uh, get it to get it to where it needs to be before our fermentation starts. So, as soon as the boil's done, typically that takes around 90 minutes uh, to do, and it goes straight into the fermenters. We cool it down to a temperature where the yeast uh, you know, acts upon it, and the yeast, once in the fermenter, creates CO2 and, and alcohol. And those, those two combinations of things uh, you know, give us our alcoholic and also our uh, you know, carbonation, our sort of mouthfeel that we like in beer sometimes. Uh, one of our most successful uh, that we've won a bronze medal in the World Beer Cup in, uh, a year ago was our gingerbread stout. And this one is brewed only in the uh, wintertime, um, where we add uh, some ginger and uh, also some honey to it. And, and so it gives these different aspects, these ingredients that we're adding sort of blend together uh, to make a nice, you know, a nice rounded flavor instead of just traditional beer where you're using just the malt pumps and some water. Well, Brian, thank you for taking the time to talk to RVA Brews. But before I let you go, hours of operation, website, give me all the good stuff. How do people get in touch with Hardy? Sure. Uh, we have our tasting hours uh, open. We can have most of these when they're in season uh, from two on uh, Wednesdays through Saturdays. Wednesdays through Fridays are uh, four to nine, and then Saturdays are two to nine. Uh, we do have our food truck uh, fun on Thursdays, and we also have a farmer's market on Wednesdays, which is uh, getting, picking up some steam right now. And, uh, and if you want to visit us on our website, it's just hardywood.com. Gotcha. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Stay tuned. RVA Grooves will return after these messages. Jazz, America's original art form at the fourth annual Richmond Jazz Festival at Maymont, presented by Altria August 8th through the 11th. You don't want to miss Jill Scott, Michael McDonald, The Whalers, Joe Sample, Kirk Whalem, and others. The Richmond Jazz Festival presented by Altria, brought to you in part by Virginia's for Lovers, Dominion, Midwest Vaco, Richmond Region Tourism, Richmond BMW, and NBC12. Visit jazz at Maymont.com today.
this season we're all about capturing the art and culture that's happening right here in Richmond, Virginia. But more importantly, this food culture that's happening. Tell me your name and how are you involved in this? My name is Malcolm Andrews. I'm the owner of Soul Ice Vending, but also the co-owner of RVA Street Foodies. Malcolm, okay, a little bit more information. What is RVA Street Foodies? We're an eclectic um, group of street vendors who are all around the Richmond area. We're about 20 plus parks and growing. So what we decided last year, we were all basically independent. We came together as one umbrella organization, RBA Street Foodie, and now we travel together as a court. Now, we are in the middle of a parking lot behind the Virginia Historical Society off, off Shepherd Street, correct? Why did you guys choose this location? Um, our community drive is to actually support nonprofits. So we realized that we each as vendors carried a following of about 1,000 to 2,000 per vendor. But when you bring that whole community together behind a nonprofit, it brings them an eclectic crowd or a target market that they didn't reach before. So we're helping their business grow. At the same time, they're lending us their lot in order to do our thing. What is what's the success of this? How's it been going so far? And also, how long have you all been in this location? Uh, we've been in this location for two years. This is the second year. And right now we're about to grow to another four locations. Uh, we have nonprofits call us from all over the city. Um, it's just becoming a thing to do because of the food network, the foodieism all over the country. People are now looking for Richmond vendors in one spot and they find us here at RBA Street Foodies. Now tell me this, Malcolm, did you ever think that Richmond would be considered a food town? Not at all. I mean, we have a lot of restaurants, but I never thought that the food scene as far as food trucks would grow like this. But what I'm learning is that it's an underground movement, it's an underground culture. There's a lot of people from outside of Richmond that are moving here from their job. And they're looking for this type of scenery coming from New York, coming from D.C. And we've recreated it for them. So now they're finding home here in Richmond. Okay, you know we got to get all the information. When are you here? What times are you here? What's the website? All of that stuff. Soul Ice website, RVA Street Foodies website. Give them all the information so they can come check you out. Well, you know Soul Ice is www.soulice.com. Um, Richmond RVA Foodies is rvastreetfoodies.com. You can always find us here at VHS, Virginia Historical Society, Tuesdays and Fridays from 6 to 9. Hardywood Brewery um, will be there on Thursdays from 6 to 9. Center of the Universe Brewery on Wednesdays from 6 to 9. And soon to be Chesterfield Town Center Mall will be on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 8.30. Well, a lot of opportunities to, for you guys to come check them out. Thanks, Malcolm, for taking the time to talk to us and, of course, being involved with this food and art and culture movement. I got to go taste some food, and, of course, I'll be back for my soul ice. Do your foodie thing. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm standing here with Stephanie from Pizza Tonight. Stephanie, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Of course. Thank you. Tell me what's going on in here. I'm seeing the oven. I'm seeing pizza, but what's the concept? We do a Neapolitan-style pizza. We make the dough ourselves, and then we have this beautiful, mobile, wood-fired oven that we cook them out of. So we have a menu of some favorites and then some specials that we change up from week to week with more gourmet offerings. And then people come up and order, and we literally just bake them fresh to order. So it's as fresh as it comes. We top them with fresh herbs and arugula at the end, and it's a really uh, beautiful product. Now, how long have you guys been involved with this food truck movement, so to say, in Richmond? Sure. This is our third year in business, and we started out really working at the farmer's markets and doing things like that, doing private catering as well. And um, the food truck courts sort of sprang, sprung up last year, and um, we got in with um, the food truck courts here and at Hardywood as well, and then um, basically got together with Paul and Malcolm for Street Foodies and have just been watching it take off from there. It's the very beginning of the season at this point, and it's already the best season so far. Now, can you believe that Richmond is considered a food, art, and culture place. Like, did you ever think that that would happen? Well, I can believe it because I chose Richmond. I've lived a lot of other places, and I saw the potential, and I saw that there were some great people, awesome chefs, awesome food writers, and people who were coming to Richmond to enjoy the lifestyle and the community. And that's something that, you know, I've worked in the hospitality industry for a long time, but I've never felt the same sense of businesses coming together to work for us similar cause yeah. um, and I think that's what attracts people and that's why when you have something so great going on great people just flock to you. No, you, you said it perfectly. All right gotta let you go because I gotta get you to sell some more pizza. Right. Tell people how they can get in contact with you if they don't get an opportunity to come down here. Website, Twitter, Facebook, email, yeah. all that stuff. We've got all that where pizzatonight.com 
Info at pizzatonight.com. If you want to email us, you can follow us on Twitter at Pizza Tonight RVA. And we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. You can find us all over the internet. Stephanie, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Get back to this pizza. I've had it. It's amazing. Make sure you check it out the next time you come out to the food truck area. Now I'm inside Curbside Creations with Don. Don, how did you get involved in this food truck business? Well, Kelly, my partner and I, Billy Metzger, have been in business for like 16 years doing special events and catering. And last year he decided uh, we needed to build a food truck to have something to do over the winter. And I said, nah, I don't think I really want to do it. And so I went home, went to bed, and couldn't sleep. Woke up the next morning, and my wife says, what's wrong with you? I said, man, I couldn't sleep. I said, I got to go in with Billy to build his food truck. So here we are two years later. So close, close friends, but also your family involved with this as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. My wife works. Billy's wife, Stacy, uh, works with us. Back here we have Renee Greenstreet who cooks for us all the time. So, yeah, it's pretty much a family affair. All right. Now, talk a little bit about what your specialty is. When people pull up to your food truck, what's on the menu? Most people come to see our alligator pool boys and alligator baskets. Uh, they don't know if they like it or not, but they want to try it. So, and we get our alligator in from Florida. I usually tell people I go down there and kill it myself, but I really don't do that. But, uh, so we get it in, it's already tenderized, marinated, and we actually cut it up into chunks ourselves, and we dredge it in buttermilk, and then we put some special seasoning, of course, like Colonel Sanders, we can't tell you all about that. So, uh, and then we fry it. It's awesome. Would you like to try one? Of course I would like to try one. But before I get into tasting, make sure we tell everybody how to get in contact with you, where you're located, website, all that kind of stuff, just in case they want to try one too. All right, it's Curbside Creations Food Truck. We're in Hanover or Mechanicsville, Virginia. Uh, you can go to curbside, uh, you know, dot net or whatever. And, and also you can go to Cool Concessions Catering. We, that's a whole different business, but it's all tied into this. So... And we're in Mechanicsville, uh, local boys around here, so you can get, and we are on Facebook uh, under Curbside Creations Food Truck. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week. RVA Grooves, all things arts and culture.